I'm gonna be testing the smallest 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries that I've seen on the market by Lee Pauls. But before I do that, we wanna talk a little bit about the specifications on the battery and what it's capable of. And when you receive it, you're gonna get this information card. And what's the most important thing to me when I'm testing this battery, because I'm gonna be testing the BMS on it to make sure that, that works correctly, is this right here, the discharge performance. We wanna make sure that it can discharge at 100 amps, like it says. Also, it has a discharge cutoff current of 300 amps plus or minus 10 amps. So it can cut off at 290 or 310. And my discharge cutoff voltage is 10 volts. So when we drain this battery through our capacity test and it gets down to where it's gonna have just 10 volts left in it, it will shut off. Also, you can get 10 volts in different ways, but generally that happens when you discharge. And the reason I have two of these batteries are that I wanna connect them in parallel and I wanna create a 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery that we're gonna be connecting to my 12 volt, 3000 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter uh, to test these batteries out. Now, if you would like, you can put these in series and you can create a 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery. So if you wanna learn more about that, leave me a comment below. Uh, or head over to my forum at DIYSolarBuilds.com, sign up there and ask questions. But in this video today, we're gonna be building a 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium battery. And what's really cool about this is, this is actually smaller than any 200 amp hour battery that I've seen, because these have such a small footprint, I think that you could almost get four of these for what a 200 amp hour uh, battery size, the case of it. So this would be really cool to build a lot of interesting things. If I had two more of these, I would probably put this in a riding lawnmower that I have. I would switch it out and make a project on that. So if you would like to see that, leave me a comment below because that is something that I'm interested in doing, uh, converting that from those old lead acid batteries to these new um, LiPo4 batteries. You may be concerned about how many of these batteries can you put in series and parallel? Well, you could put four of these in parallel and four of those in series, creating a battery bank of 16 total batteries and a total size of 20,480 watt hours. I wanna make sure to point out that these batteries don't have the code temperature sensors built into them. For me, that's not important because I do not store them below 40 Fahrenheit, nor do I charge them, which is where it's really important, below 32 Fahrenheit. So for me, it's not important, but if that is important to you, then you wanna make sure to keep that in mind and you wanna look for batteries that have that cold temperature sensor built into it so you'll protect the cells from being damaged when you go to charge it when it gets below that 32 Fahrenheit. That does not mean that you can't use the batteries below 32 Fahrenheit. You most certainly can, you just don't wanna charge them below that. With that said, these are extremely small and light. So our next topic is gonna to be putting them on the scale and seeing what these weigh. Each battery weighing in at 21 pounds. That means you can create a 12 volt, 400 amp hour battery and only weigh 84 pounds. Now let's grab the dimensions and we'll go the depth at five and a half, the height at eight and a quarter, and the width is nine inches. What we got going on, because it's important that I explain this every time I do one of these battery reviews, is that I have a safety switch right here. So the battery hooks directly into that switch right here. And if something happens, I could turn that switch on or off and shut everything down. Then it feeds over here to a shunt. That shunt allows me the capabilities of monitoring the battery, everything that's going on with it. And if we were gonna be using a solar charger, which we are not today, but if we were, this would be turned on. I have this hooked to a breaker that runs out to a solar uh, array. If we had a different type of inverter, then I would run this over 
to this uh, panel box and then I would be able to use that plug down there. But we have plugs on top of our inverter today and that's what we're gonna use. This is a 12 volt inverter. I could hook those batteries up in series and make it a 24 volt system and then I have to switch out my inverter. But I want to test this in a 12 volt setting. So I'll have a 200 amp hour between the two batteries. To connect these in parallel, I wanna connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative and then I'll hook this to that positive terminal and the negative to the negative terminal. It's that simple. Probably notice that I put the positive on this battery and the negative on this battery that are leading over to the inverter. And that's the correct way of hooking this up when you're connecting them in parallel. So I have my positive to my positive, then this positive running over to the inverter, my negative to my negative, and that negative running over to the inverter. And what that does, it helps when I go to drain these batteries that it's pulling evenly from both of them at the same time, and it protects the battery and it doesn't damage it. I do wanna point out that because we're in a test setting, and I'm not doing this as a permanent fixture or have this set up permanently, I just stacked the two cable terminals on top of one another. You wouldn't wanna do that in a permanent setting, you wanna do that correctly, but for a test setting, that's gonna work for me today. And now that I have everything connected correctly, I'm gonna bring the shunt display over here so you guys will be able to see it during recording and we'll turn everything on. So we gotta flip this switch, turns on the shunt, and then we'll turn on our inverter. And let me explain a little bit about the display for everyone that might not know this. The remaining amp hours is 200 amp hours. That's because we have two 100 amp hours connected in parallel. And we've used a little bit of power out of these batteries because when we turned on the inverter, it used a little bit, but we're still setting at 100%. We're still recording correctly. And this number that we're looking for here should match the 200 amp hours or better to pass the capacity test. And now I'm gonna bring in my arsenal of heating elements. And what this allows me to do is push around 250 to 260 amps to shut down the BMS. However, I need to get one more appliance to go over that 310 amps because if you remember back earlier in the video, I stated that the peak discharge of this was 300 amps plus or minus 10. So that would take me up to 310. I wanna make sure to get maybe 320, 340 to make sure that those uh, BMSs shut down those batteries. My third appliance of choice is gonna be this old sandwich maker. This will definitely get us over that 300 mark but I have to hold this in my hand because the extension cord isn't long enough for me to set this down and plug it in at the same time. So let's see if we can uh, get the BMS to shut off. We're right at the limit. So when we plug this in, we're at 305, 38, 39, 310. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna have to stand here, but this should be shutting off here pretty soon. Oh man, it heated up so much for so long that this turned off. We're well over that 100 amps that it's supposed to be able to continuously discharge at anyway. This is not working out. I'm getting tired. Look how short they make the cords on these things. It sucks. Kick back on, 309, 310 amps. I wonder if I can get risky. See if we can set it. This is, this is not good. <laughs> I don't wanna hold it. Here. All right. I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> Let's see if that works. All right, so we've been running for, I think more than enough time that those BMSs should have shut down. Finally, the BMS shut down, it worked, that's good. Let's get these appliances moved off of here because that's dangerous. And I'm only gonna need 
the heat gun from here on out because I want to be able to regulate how much that we're drawing from the batteries down to 0%. Now, um, there's an argument that this could change the way the capacity is. So if this meets 100 or 200, sorry, because we've got two of them, this meets 200 amp hours of capacity after doing this test, that shows me that we have some high quality cells in this battery. I'm actually thinking it's gonna fall short of 200 amp hours now because we used almost 30% of that battery life out of those two batteries to conduct that BMS test. But let's see what happens. Even after depleting that battery over 300 amps at the beginning, we still passed the capacity test of the 200 amp hours that we needed with 207.67. My final thoughts on the Lee Paul's 12 volt, 100 amp hour mini batteries are that I would recommend them as a buy, 100%. They are actually in a mini form, so they're a lot smaller than the regular size batteries and they perform like they're supposed to.